Climate change, it's affecting the mix of bacteria and fungi in the air, and it could spell bad news for human health and food security. A new study by NTU has found that air temperature directly impacts the species of microbes found, as well as their ratio. We're joined by Professor Stefan Schuster, who led the study, and he'll be joining us as we go through some of its findings. Now, researchers collected air samples from across Singapore, Germany, and Switzerland. Now, these were taken at various heights, ranging from ground level up to 3,500 meters. Good evening, Professor Schuster. A number of factors to consider here, different heights that these samples were taken at, climates, as well as environments. How did your team vary these conditions to get accurate and comparable results? We started here in Singapore by scaling different high-rise buildings, but uh, we very soon realized that the atmosphere, the ambient air was very strongly mixed. And um, after this, we um, scaled mountain in the Alps, and we also found the same problem. And um, so we realized that we need to come up with a sampling method that would not impede the airflow. And the way that we uh, accomplished this is we used metrological towers that are very similar to the ones that are on Bukitia Mountain here in Singapore. And in parallel, uh, we flew a research airplane at the same time. And so um, the reason that we could do this was because we had a very large fleet of air samplers, 40, and all of these measurements at the different heights could be done at the same time. And this, in the end, made the samples very comparable with one another. Well, after collecting these samples, your team then analyzed them. And these Petri dishes show the various types of bacteria and fungi found at different test locations. Now, those collected from higher altitudes, they had more traces of bacteria. So, Professor, can you explain to us perhaps the reasons behind that and if there are differences between the time of day that the samples were collected? Yes, what's very important is to understand the differences uh, of day and night. And when we talked about this research the last time on your program, we had just discovered the dial cycle of microorganisms which means that there's mostly bacteria and certain uh, fungi during the day. And then the wood rotting fungi, they come out at night. And this day-night differences had previously not been observed. And in this study, we could now show that these day-night differences only occur up to a height of about 1,000 meters. And then above 1,000 meters, everything is the same but mostly consisting of bacteria. And this being the same at greater heights is then what led to the discovery that it is temperature that is driving these day-night cycles and the different composition uh, of these microbial communities in the air. Well, the study also says that the different combinations caused by rising global temperatures could take a toll on those who are suffering from respiratory conditions, as well as on crops as well. So, Professor Schuster, how would we know what levels are considered dangerous for us and, and what might be dangerous for the food we eat or the crops that are grown? Well, so the first question, the, the medical relevant um, research we are doing here in Singapore in a collaboration with LKNC Medicine, but also with colleagues at um, NUS, and what we can show is that these organisms that we have discovered in our environmental studies cause strong reactions in patients that suffer from respiratory illnesses, such as asthma, COPD, or bronchiectasis. And so um, the future research that we will do together with uh, the medical researchers is we try to find out uh, how this is and whether there can be a desensitization of the people who have this uh, very strong reactions to just the normal flora of microorganisms in ambient air. But in the second question that you asked about the food safety is, 
once we understood that temperature is the most important factor in this and that the temperature in the atmosphere might actually increase, as we all know, due to global warming, this will mean that bacteria coming from the ground will reach much higher heights. And at the uh, consequence of that, um, they will be able to disperse further and reach regions that so far they would not have reached. And the prediction is that a lot of organisms from the tropics will be able to travel north or in the end might even reach uh, polar regions. So everything will become more distributed. And this then will um, uh, constitute an opportunity for pathogenic organisms that might infest crops or bring down crop yields or could even have an impact on livestock and, and the health of uh, livestock animals. Professor Schuster, thank you very much for talking to us about this study and uh, all the best for the, 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 the uh, additional uh, study that you, you'll probably be undertaking with your team as well on this. Uh, we've been speaking there to Professor Stefan Schuster. He's research director from, the, from NTU.